Why the church? This morning I'm concluding this message series that went on longer than I expected. But we've launched a series uh, about a month and a half ago called Why the Church? With a question mark at the end. Why the church? We entitled that series, Why the Church, because it's a question that, if you were to be honest, many of us have asked over our time as an adult, or maybe even as a kid, why the church? Why is the church important? Why do I even need to to be a part of a church? Why do I need to come to Sunday worship service in the church? And many of us have been there before, you know, you say, and it's this new age kind of thing. Well, you know, I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. And typically when we say that, we're saying that we don't really feel like fooling with the church. We definitely don't feel like coming in on Sunday mornings and worshiping. Definitely not every Sunday. I might give you once a month or, or, or see and meet uh, Christians. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. But this new age, this newfound thing of spirituality over what, what, what people would call religiosity is something that has pulled us away from the church. It's pulled us away from the church. All of a sudden, we have a better idea than grandmama and grandpapa. And then we, we got a better idea than mama and daddy. Are there. We got a better idea than, than, uh, than the disciples had. We, we got a better idea than Jesus. Who launched the church? Who created the church? All of a sudden, we know better, and we know better because I guess we have not experienced what we thought or hoped we would experience in the church, and so we've decided on our own, we will figure this thing out on my own. I got this. Don't worry about it. I don't need the church. I'm going to do life on my own. It's just me and God. But here's the reality. Many of us have been lying to ourselves because God didn't create the church for us to neglect the church. God didn't create the church for us to live life apart from the church. God didn't create the church just for it to be um, uh, irrelevant at one season of our life or in one season of history and no longer relevant in another season of our life or even in another season of history. God created the church because the church is special. It's what God used to advance his name. His kingdom, his plan for your life. It's God's idea. Today, all across the world, um, people are acknowledging the fact that today is Pentecost Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. And it's a day that, um, that we acknowledge in the Bible uh, as a day that uh, God poured out his Holy Spirit on the followers of Jesus, on the disciples. And, and in that moment of him pouring out his spirit on the disciples, they began to speak in other languages, languages that they didn't grow up knowing, languages that they had never experienced before. They were speaking in tongues. And, and in that moment, in biblical history, it's in the book of Acts, uh, when the Holy Spirit came down, what we find is the launch of the church in that moment. It's when the church started. What many people have done in church world is taken the day of Pentecost and said, okay, this is what happened in the Bible. We're going to tarry until we start speaking in tongues. And I'm not here to speak against that, but what I'm here to talk about is the fact that on the day of Pentecost, God launched the church in, the, in history. God started the church in that very moment, this day that we recognize as Pentecost, it was 50 days from the day that Jesus was, um, was assassinated in the kangaroo court. It was 50 days after um, he died, was buried, and rose again. It was 50 days from that moment till um, he came and, and dropped his Holy Spirit on, uh, on his followers and the church began. And it was not as much about the tongues that were spoken as it was the power that came through the Holy Spirit. 
I said this all the time that that in the book of Acts, when when the Holy Spirit came upon uh, Jesus disciples and they began to speak in tongues, it was less about the speaking in tongues and it was more about the power that the Holy Spirit brought. There's power. And when the church was launched, the church launched with power, you all. It launched with power to change things, to transform things from where it was to where God had planned for them. The power of the Holy Spirit was present and things changed. And if we were to be honest, some of us who, 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 who make this statement that I'm not a religious person, I'm a spiritual person. The person that typically says that is a per person that has not seen the power being presented through the church. What we read about in scripture, what we, what we, what we say happened then, we look at it, and what we see in the church now, it's hard for us to put together. It's hard for us to connect because we don't see that same type of power to change what was into what God has planned for them moving forward. That's why so many people are kind of disturbed or kind of ticked off or just don't want to really fool with the church because they don't see the power that God has through the church. I just want to remind us this morning that God has a plan for the church and it's through the church that God works his Holy Spirit and it's through the Holy Spirit that we receive power to do what God has for us. So that's why, I'm, that's why I've been preaching on the church. Why the church? Because we need the church. Why the church? Because you need the church. You need the church more than you've ever needed the church before. You need the church for every aspect of your life. You need the church for your family, for your finances, for your fitness, your health, for your future, what God has. You need the church because God used the church as a vehicle for his Holy Spirit to give you the power that you need. You've been trying to do this thing on your own. Again. You, you've been trying to do this thing on your own through your strategies, through your motivational um, uh, 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 conjecture and things that you've been doing. You've been trying to do things, and I'm saying you, but when I say you, I'm really talking about me. I'm really talking about the fact that, that, that it's too easy for Lee May to, to put together his own plans for what things ought to look like. Lee May put together his own plans of what this church ought to look like. Lee May putting together his own plans about what his family is going to look like. Lee May putting together his own plans for what his finances look like. That's many of our stories, and what we've done is we've neglected God's role in our life. And what I want you to know is that God has, has, has created his church to, to, to be this conduit, right? To be this connection point for us to live out his plans for our life. He doesn't want you to do it separate from the church. The church is important. Why the church? Because it's God's idea. Why the church? Because Jesus started the church. Why the church? Because God's Holy Spirit is present within the church and it is his Holy Spirit that gives you what you need, y'all. I can look at my life and see how it's been through the Holy Spirit that I've been able to do some of the things that I've been able to do, not because I'm special, not because I'm any different than you. It's because of God's Holy Spirit over my life and me understanding that if I embrace his Holy Spirit, if I embrace his thoughts and plans for me, then, then I will be successful. I will live out what he has for me. You've been trying to figure out why your plans aren't working. They're not bad plans, and that's why you keep knocking your head up against the wall. They're not bad plans. They're good plans. You've studied this thing. You've, you've, you've done what other people have said you, can, you should do. You've, you, you've had mentors. You've had life coaches. You've had counselors. You've had all these things in place that should position you for success, but that success, if you are a believer in God, is only limited if you do it outside of God. Amen. And it's his Holy Spirit that he wants to give you the power 
to accomplish all that he has for you. So let's look at scripture real quick. Let's look at scripture. I've been in the book of Acts because it's in the book of Acts that, that the church was started. And I want to show you how in the book of Acts, it's not just meant for a uh, life as it was uh, 2,000 plus years ago. It's really relevant to what is going on right now. The things that you've seen in the launch of the church is the things that you ought to be seeing here in the life of the church right now. So in the book of Acts, Jesus um, tells them as, as Jesus, again, Jesus uh, had already been crucified and Jesus was resurrected from the dead, right? And Jesus came back and he was talking with his disciples. He was, he was commissioning them. He was getting them ready for this great work that he had for them to do. And he, uh, for 40 days after he was resurrected, he was actually literally physically here on earth uh, giving his disciples instructions and wisdom and guidance on how they ought to live life without him here on church. What, on earth, what their assignment was uh, for them moving forward. And Jesus, over those 40 days, gave them what they needed. And then he kind of concluded with this. He said, now, y'all go to Jerusalem. You go to Jerusalem and you wait there. And when you wait there, I'm going to send to you uh, a helper, an advocate, he says, I'm going to send to you the Holy Spirit, and through the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. And they didn't even really know what that power was for, for them to do. They would receive power through the Holy Spirit, and, and they did what Jesus said. How many of y'all know that when Jesus says it, you can believe it? You can put money on it. You can put your house down on it. When Jesus says it, you ought to embrace that thing, and even if it doesn't come when you think it ought to come or with the timing that you may have, you can rest assured that if Jesus says it over your life, it's going to happen. I'm here to tell you. And the disciples they were obedient. What did they do? They said, all right, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem. Just wait there. They went to Jerusalem, and they went up in somebody's house, and they were probably like, doop to do Where is this thing you said was coming up? You know, doop to do And while they were all together, the Holy Spirit came in the room that they were, and, and it gave them power, and the power was expressed in that moment through the speaking of tongues in different languages. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were, they were all with one accord in one place. They were obedient. Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and stay there. They were obedient. Verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Y'all, what I just read was literally the start of the church as we know it. That was the beginning of the church as we knew it uh, because they were obedient to God. They came together in one place. The Holy Spirit came into, their, into the room where they were, and they received that power. The church began in the book of Acts. And I want you to see this, too, that the church in its beginning, from the very beginning, see, you can, you can understand um, the role of a thing or, or what that thing ought to be by how it was started. The church was started through the Holy Spirit. And it had power immediately. See, that wasn't just power just for the church as it started back in Acts. That's intended for us to walk in that power right now. That same power that the Holy Spirit brought then is the same power that the church ought to be operating in right now. The power of the Holy Spirit was present then. It ought to be present right now. And in the midst of all that, we have the first sermon that was ever preached. Peter stands up when, when all looked like chaos was going on. People speaking in other tongues. They were confused. Why are they speaking in a tongue that I've never heard them speaking? Why am I speaking in a tongue that I never learned? Peter stands up and says, look, y'all, 
This thing isn't a surprise to us. This thing isn't new to us. As a matter of fact, this thing was prophesied way back before through the prophet Joel. This thing was prophesied that, that this would happen. And, and Peter preaches in that moment, the very first sermon that was preached in the church. And, and as, as Peter um, uh, uh, delivered his message, look at what happened in Acts chapter 2, 41. Verse 41, it says, then those who gladly received his word, that was Peter's word, who had preached, were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. I said this before, a mega church formed overnight in the first church. The power of the Holy Spirit showed up on the scene, and then everybody was like, I need to get with that. I need to get down with that. Why? Because they saw the physical manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. See, people are attracted to the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, conversely, people are, are, are is it detracted? Or they, they pull away when they don't see something being what it should be. We, we talk a good game about the church, about what the church ought to be doing, but if people aren't seeing us live out what we say we're about, then what do they do? They walk away. They, they walk away from the church. It, it would have been 3,000 people walking away from the church if they didn't produce what they had been proclaiming. But here, 3,000 people were added to them that very day. And in that worship experience, it says in verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That was the teaching of Jesus that he had taught his disciples and fellowship. You, you talk about uh, wanting to have a relationship uh, with God, but God built us to be in community. Amen. He built us to do life together. And I know it's easy, you all, when when life gets tough or we're going through our own kind of issues and things. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's easy. It's too easy for us to back up and say, look, I'm going to handle this thing on my own because I know how to handle it on my own. But, but it's better for you when you go through life in community, going through the stuff, tough stuff together, having those tough conversations, having people check you when you need to be checked, holding you accountable, praying for you in that moment, helping walk with you in those times of need. They were in fellowship with one another. I'm telling you what the church looked like then and it ought to look like right now. They broke bread together. We, we broke bread in communion today. When they broke bread, it was, in the, uh, it was in the same vein that Jesus sat down when he had what we call the Lord's Supper. When, they, when, they, when he gave them the bread and the wine and said, do this in remembrance of me. And then they were praying. The, if a church without prayer is not a church at all. If you are not talking to the Father collectively, together, corporately, if you're not talking to the Father uh, individually as well, you are not operating in the vein of the church. Then verse 43 says, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. See, we, we so, so often we connect the Holy Spirit with the speaking in tongues, but that same Holy Spirit gave them the power to produce wonders and signs. What was those wonders and signs? Somebody showed up on the scene and they couldn't hear. They were deaf and, and they could now hear. Somebody showed up on the scene. They were blind. They couldn't see. And when with the power, they could see. Somebody showed up on the scene and their needs were not being met. And now their needs are being met because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When people saw that, guess what they did? They started coming. They started coming by the bolos and look at what happened. Verse 44, now all who believe were together and had all things in common. Y'all, that's another sign, wonder, and a miracle. Folk coming together and having all things in common, meaning what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours. We all the same. We got, tell me what you need. I got you, you know, because you know what? We start, uh, we start contemplating. We start considering the life that we've seen them live. You got all them shoes at home. Why you need me to give you some money? You know, 
My dad talks bad about me and my family because we, we uh, do Uber Eats and all that. You know, that have made us lazy now. You know, you, you spent all that money on Uber Eats. You could have been cooking at home. You would have saved money. You know, once we start, we start looking at people's circumstances and evaluating for ourselves about what should we stand up and help them in their time of need, right? And so they had all things in common, verse 45, and then they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. The power of the Holy Spirit was still operating. See, it doesn't seem as spiritual, but that was one of the most spiritual moments that they had. See, we just look at the speaking in tongues and say, oh, that's spiritual. But, 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 but God took it to another level when he said, now everybody come together. You get anybody to come together for a prolonged period of time, laying everything that they got on the line and saying, hey, what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. That's a miracle. There were power, there was power being shown through the church. So I go back to the question, why the church? Because this world needs the church. When, when, when the power of the Holy Spirit showed up on the scene, people's practical needs were being met. And this world needs the power of the Holy Spirit to be rested on us so that we can go out and transform this world through the awesome power of Christ. Did y'all just see what I did? That, that's the mission of Transforming Faith Church. God, the world needs us to stand up and be what God has called for us to be. And I'm here to tell you that Transforming Faith Church isn't just another church to be on another corner, y'all. God has a plan for us that allows us to, to, to punch outside of our weight class. Yeah, we small in numbers. We may be a lightweight in terms of numbers, but we punch like the heavyweight champion of the world. We punch like we are the greatest of all time because it's not about what we bring to the table. It's not because you and me are so smart. It's not because we are so well resourced or we got all the money. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit over this church. And I'm here to tell y'all, if we continue to embrace the power of the Holy Spirit, this world will be changed. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this world. I'm here to tell you we can change the poverty numbers through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can change graduations through the power levels of the power of the Holy Spirit. We can change the health uh, outcomes of our people through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can change crime in our community through the power of the Holy Spirit. The police trying to figure out, well, what happened? What, what, what happened that these numbers went down and, and, you know, people like to take credit for stuff that they didn't do, especially politicians. And I'm telling you, not from what I heard, I'm telling you from what I know, right? We all, we like to take credit for stuff that, that we didn't have nothing to do with. But, but when things go bad, we want to blame somebody else. We, we want the politicians to, to try and take credit for what God has done. Go ahead and take credit, Mr. Mr. Politician or Mrs. Politician, excuse me, Darshan. Uh, go ahead and take credit, lady leader. Go ahead and take credit. It's okay because we know it's because of the power of the Holy Spirit, y'all. And what I need for you to get from me this morning is God has big plans for us. God has big plans for us. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not just because 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 we're so good. It's not just because God likes us more than he likes anybody else. No, it's because he has his plan for our life and he's given us his Holy Spirit to allow us to be the conduit to transform our world. He has you all. And I need you to get that. And when, when, when people start seeing uh, what God is doing through us, They'll start coming. But here's the thing. It's not for them to come so that we can have a big church. It's so that they can come into the kingdom and begin to live out the life that God has planned for them, that God has established for them, so that when they're walking out God's plan for their life, guess what? They're performing signs, wonders, and miracles. They are taking people's situation from where they are, and they're making them the situations that God has planned for them. And then because of their gospel, because of their testimony, because of their 
their witness, people are being add to the, added to the church there. Our, our victory isn't in our numbers. Our victory is in the transformation of this world. That's our victory. That's our measurement for success, that we are embracing the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are embracing what God has for us to walk out, to live out, that we are embracing everything that he's established for us. Verse 43, they said, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods. They divided them among all. You know what those pe that people uh, understood? That life isn't about me. It's not. It's not just about the legacy that I'm going to leave behind. My name up in lights. I wish Justin was still up in here. So it's not just about um, um, him making millions of dollars and being up on the big screen and people saying his name. And it's not just even about us saying, oh, we know Justin. I remember when Justin was like this or whatever. It's not about that. It's about God getting glory through his plan for Justin's life. It's about God getting glory through his plan for your life. That's what God is looking for us to walk out. And if you think you can do this apart from his church, I want you to think again. God used the church as the vehicle to accomplish his will on the earth. From the very beginning, he used his plan for the church to change people's lives, to transform their situations, to change communities. And here's the thing. I think I quoted this last Sunday on, online. The church, I'm sorry, the world needs us to be the church. The world, and they don't even realize it. They just know that something has got to change. They just know that something has got to be different. Every time we see a Uvalde, Texas, or a Buffalo, New York, or a Sandy Hook, or a Columbine, Every time we see a tragedy in the world, everybody says, what is this world coming to? And, every, and people are looking from hope, for hope somewhere here, there, and, and, and unfortunately, uh, what, what happens is we look to our political leaders to give us an answer, to, to give us hope. To, to give us direction because we think that, that, that it is through our political leadership that is going to help to transform this world. And, and, and I will submit, I, during one of the Bible studies a few weeks ago, I, I you know, kind of was talking to myself because I was just me talking, right? And, and I said, what will we grade the church's performance right now? And I thought about a, a failing grade. And I said, no, that's kind of tough. That's Because a fail, an a, a F says you're not doing anything. The church is working. The church is doing the best that, that we can. I truly, truly believe that. And I'm talking about the universal church. But I gave it an incomplete. Because we hadn't turned in some assignments. We've been tardy to too many classes. We left some classes early, you know, we just, uh, some, some assignments we turned in, we only did half of the assignments. So I would give us an incomplete because that incompletion is, be, is, is, I truly believe, because we have not fully been operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if we are operating through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
this world will be changed. And I keep leaping straight to this world because, because that's how big our God is. Yeah, we can transform Panola Industrial. We can uh, transform Stonecrest. We can transform uh, DeKalb County and all of that. And that God has called for us to do that. But God's power is limitless. Because if you just think that, 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 that God can just transform DeKalb, but he can't transform the world, then that's saying you're putting a limit on God. And God can do all things. And he wants to do that through you, through us, coming together, having all things in common, laying aside our own personal needs for the needs of the kingdom of God. Now, let me stop right here and also say this, that the power of the Holy Spirit is for you as well. It's not just for what we can do out in the world. The power of the Holy Spirit can transform your life, can change your situation can get you from here to there. And the world is looking anxiously for you to stand up and be who God has called for you to be and for uh, us to be who God has called for us to be as the church. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 8, and, and he says, uh, he, he says, uh, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity with, against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Verse 8, here it is. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I want to please God. And Paul knew that you can't please God living in your flesh. Flesh. You can't please God just coming up with your own bright ideas, your own bright plans, your own schemes that you have put in place. You please God through living through the Spirit. God wants us to live underneath the umbrella of his Holy Spirit. And he wants to do that through the church, y'all. So my prayer this morning is that we re-embrace his church. And again, you may think I'm preaching to the choir because you are here. You're like, hey, Lee, I'm here. I'm, I'm in church. I'm, I'm doing church right now. I, I show up, right? But it's not just showing up. It's not, it's not just showing up, sitting in your place and saying, here, check, I've done this thing. That's, that's not what God is looking for. God is wanting a, per, a believer to say, I'm here, God, use me. I'm, I'm, I'm here with outstretched arms. I need your Holy Spirit, God. I need your Holy I can't do this thing called life without your presence, God, without your Holy Spirit, God. Why the church? Because through the church, this world will receive the change that it needs to receive. Through the church, your life will be transformed. And God's kingdom will be advanced. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for you this morning because I want your eyes to be open to what God has for you through the church that you really begin to understand the importance of God's church. And transforming fake church is a part of God's universal church. And so if you feel like God has called you to be a member here, if you've joined our church officially, if you've gone through new members, you're a member. God is not just calling, causing you, calling you to just pop in and pop out, right, when you feel like it. God is not just calling for you to just be a seat holder. God is not just calling for you to check the box and say, I'm a member of a church. I come to church periodically. No, God wants you to be fully engaged in his church. 
Yo, I'm freer than I've probably been free since we started this church because I am resolute in understanding that it is not about the numbers that God places here. So me saying this has nothing to do with our numbers because I know God can do. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen God do some miraculous things in my life with, with, when I, I don't have an answer for it. I couldn't come up with the solution in my mind. I couldn't have come up with that strategic plan. What God has for us as a part of his body, as a part of his church, is phenomenal, y'all. And I see it. And me wanting you to be connected really has more uh, uh, about me wanting you to see you live out your life as God has planned. And for you to have the kind of impact on this world that God is like, Please, I want you to do it. I want you to go. I want you to be all that I've called for you to be. That's my hope for you, to be connected to the church as he desires for you to be connected. So I'm going to pray for you this morning. Look, if, if, there's, if you're sitting in here and you've been looking for a church or you've been saying, hey, this may even be my church this morning, we, want, we would love for you to join, be a part of our fellowship that we can call you a transformer. Uh, we would love because we just want you to be where God wants you to be, right? And so if that's for you, I want you to come down. We Typically, we don't pay much that much time with that. But this morning, if you feel like this is your church, you need to be in a place that God has called for you to be in. If you feel like that's it, we family. I want you to get with Chris, Pastor Chris or Pastor Eddie, um, uh, at the end of service, connect with them, and we'll start you along that path. And if you have never confessed Jesus, see, there is no church apart from Jesus. So this whole church message really is for not for you if you've never accepted Jesus in your life. So if you've never confessed Jesus to say that, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus came to earth, that he lived a sinless life, that he died and was resurrected so that he could pay the penalty for our sin. If you've never made that confession, and that may not fully even make sense right now, I'm clear on that, but that's why we're here to walk with you to help teach you and guide you on that journey as well. That is something that you want to confess this morning. You'll have that opportunity. Amen. Can I pray for you real quick before we get up out of here? God, I thank you for your church. Thank you for the blueprint that you've given for your church, God. And I thank you for our place and space in your church. God, my prayer this morning is that those who are seated here this morning, those who are watching virtually, God, this morning would embrace your church, would see your church for what it is that you have created it to be. They will be connected to your church so that they can live out all that you have planned for their lives, God. God, allow them to be closer to you through your church. God, I pray that you would bless the socks off of their lives, their knees, God, uh, their challenges, God, any unresolved issues, just be with them, touch their lives, God. And we thank you for your church. And God, we even thank you for transforming faith church. Thank you for this, your idea. Thank you for creating this church. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.